uh, it looks so easy, but with all the panels, with all the things that need to be thought of, um, it is more difficult than one thinks. And also the movements, like sometimes when we rehearse, we even sit back to back mm -hmm. so I can get a sense of how Natasha has to move to also reach the, the wow. upper notes and, and all that. And that's quite interesting as well to, as well as Natasha feels my breath that I can get a sense of what is actually working in her body. And also that is of course linked to my seeing then as much as my uh, yeah, dual partner is relaxed, the better I can sing. Beautiful with a harp at the back. Yeah, yeah. it's part of the cantata, yeah. so we thought maybe it should be um, in the frame too. <laughs> yes, yeah. of course. But um, Natasha and Lucia, it's so lovely to meet you here on Zoom. Thank you for Thank the invitation. You. Yeah. Tell me, where are you based? Um, well, that's hard to say. So in general, we are based in, in, in Germany. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're switching between two city, cities right now. Um, I'm from Frankfurt and we have a, a good base uh, for con uh, concerts there. Um, Lucia is in Weimar right now. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. Um, so uh, right now we were rehearsing in Weimar for that competition. And it's a special competition because it's not only about the music and a concert, and a concept, but it's also about moderation. Yeah. And um, as we try always to do our concerts quite variated with both uh, the opportunity for us to speak to the audience and that they get a little closer and get to know us, as well as we share our music, so solo harp pieces, but mainly uh, art song, uh, art songs from uh, different epochs. And uh, then I also recite poems. Um, so oh, that wow. is kind of the, the yeah. combination. Yeah. yeah. Um, because you are a, a mezzo soprano. Yes, that's yeah. right. And how wonderful that you uh, that you talk to the audience because I think you know this is something that I think is sometimes missing, um, and and I love it because I'm not a trained musician and and for me it's almost as if I'm learning then about the music and and learning about uh, what the musicians know. It's it's almost this information giving. Mm. You know, it's not just the music, but it's al almost this information given and it's. For me, always a sense that I just I didn't understand the music better. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I also think, um, I mean, why are we doing this? We, of course, love the music. We we understand the music, maybe in a special way because we have to prepare it and we do it really ourselves. But um, in fact, we're doing it for the audience. So um, yeah. I think yeah. it's very important that um, the people know a lot about the music they hear. Maybe they know backstories from the composer's life or how this epoch is working and why the music is structured like it is. And um, yeah, if there is no possibility to talk about that during concert, um, how can we um, offer something big like that and just um, think that the audience um, is trained to hear all this and yeah, that's a way to share what we hear while um, we're playing, also to be heard by the audience. So, yeah. 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 No, I agree. Well, I, I think that's wonderful that you can do that. Um, but now tell me, how did you two get together? Because this is such a lovely, uh, that's yeah, such a lovely so duo you know, with the harp and the, and the singing. So what was, so what, was what was the initial idea here? So we uh, met um for our studies oh, and okay. Natasha started to uh to study harp and I was actually becoming a teacher first before I uh went on uh studying opera song um and yeah then we had different classes together and uh then finally Natasha came to a reading I yeah. was actually um having a reading it called Nordic Sounds and it was all about Norwegian literature because I lived in Norway and after she heard that uh, she was like let's come together yeah. and uh, mix our talents and mm -hmm. 
on top of that, it's a friendship. It's not only music that uh, is uh, we are linked together with. So yeah, it grows very naturally both the the colleague and the friendship part. <laughs> yeah. 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 But that's also so important because I spoke to um, a, a bass singer and he said, uh, only recently he said to me that it's so lovely to sing together with people who are your friends. And yes, I, and absolutely. Yeah, so, um, and now you're saying the same thing. It's This needs to be that bit of a chemistry between you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So rehearsing is very easy then because, um, of course, we are sharing a lot of same ideas and same uh, favorite um, epochs and some uh, stuff like that. But, um, yeah, the communication is easier, I think. And uh, you can be very open-minded because, you know, um, your partner is um, is listening closely because he, he likes you as a person and not only for this few um, concerts. And I also do believe that the audience gets a feeling of it, that yeah. uh, it's not only the feeling of us that the other one gets your back, but it's also like when we create something together and we have played now for several years together. So it's also something that grows, right? That the music together uh, grows like, like a tree, but also the audience, I think can feel that the, that, that there is something very much felt in the same way, mm. not only spoken about, but also like, you know, kind of invisible. Oh, I, I totally believe that. Yeah. But now I want to know, so you have different instruments, you know, you are your instrument and, and, um, and Natasha, you have your instrument. So do you learn from each other in that sense? Is there something that you understand more of each other by doing together, working together like this? Yeah, completely. Um, for me, the biggest part uh, or the newest part was all the um, the breath uh, Lucia needs for singing. So um, I had to learn to listen very closely. How will she end or when will she end the phrase? so that I can react or maybe can um, push a little forward uh, or, yeah. So, yeah, the, the listening and the, um, yeah, I, you could say sometimes I'm singing myself during uh, playing the harp. Really? Because uh, then it's uh, it's more natural and I, I can relate to the feeling Lucia uh, is having in this moment. And, yeah, that's very nice and I can combine this with my solo bro uh, solo pieces too because then you start uh, to think different about uh, yeah how to create phrases or how to connect phrases and I have to say like the harp is a very difficult and complex <laughs> instrument so it took me a very long to understand what like because mm. Natasha makes everything possible and every song can be harpsified and everything is uh, <laughs> uh, is is uh, looks so easy but with all the pedals, with all the things that need to be thought of, um, it is more difficult than one thinks. And also the movements, like sometimes when we rehearse, we even sit back to back. Mm -hmm. So I can get a sense of how Natasha has to move to also reach the, the wow. upper notes and, and all that. And that's quite interesting as well to, as well as Natasha feels my breath, that I can get a sense of what is actually working in her body. And also that is, of course, linked to my seeing then as much as my uh, yeah, dual partner is relaxed, the better I can sing. Yeah, I think it's, but it's the same with singing, you know, you you guys make it look so easy and, and with a harp as well. I think it, it looks so easy, but you don't, you forget how much practice they, goes into that and, and the work and the physical input. And it's also with the singing, you know, it is very physical and we d we think it comes only from the voice but it comes from the whole body and it's it's also with the heart but yeah. now you have to of course uh, uh arrange then things that would go with the leader that that you are singing um let's see how, so who does the arrangements then um yeah we talk about the pieces before and um 
yeah, I think it starts that Lucia decides uh, which um, which key we use, uh, which is okay. um, best yeah. for her. Um, and I take the piano scores and arrange them for me. Sometimes I um, have to think about what um, what is possible uh, and what makes sense to my instrument. So mm, not. All of the pieces are possible, but I do my very best mm -hmm. <laughs> to make everything work for, for Harp 2. And um, yeah, this is also very um, interesting for me because I, I had piano lessons too. Uh, so it works, uh, it works completely different than Harp. So uh, it was uh, at one point very annoying to play piano because the development wasn't as fast as with the harp. But uh, now for Duo Cantapa, um, I remarked a lot that it's helpful to know how the other instrument is working, which scores I actually arrange for myself. So oh. yeah, and it's a difference because uh, for piano, you can use all 10 fingers. I just use eight of them. Um, yeah, so sometimes I have to let things go down or um, make things a little bit different than it's in the original part. But um, until now, it, it works, and uh, uh, there are lots. Uh, there are a lot of pieces we we not just prepared yet, but uh, choose for us for the future. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> but and you also have to say there are some some composers that actually yeah. do think about the harp. So oh, yeah. Ravel, Maurice Ravel, or Benjamin Britten. They are two examples for mm -hmm. uh, composers that do actually also mark in their scores is for harp slash piano. So um, that is, of course, a big help. And yeah. we also, we adore these two composers. So we are uh -huh. already like mm -hmm. done uh, yeah, several songs and also planning on doing entire cycles. Yeah. But now you, you said now before that you're doing, that you're working on this for this competition. How important is it for you to do these competitions? Well, it's the first one for us. Um, and I think one strength of our duo is that we always reach for something new. Yeah. And okay. that's how we developed. So it's like in the past three years, we have made six programs, mm -hmm. which is a lot, like every half year, a new program, um, a new premiere, a new, like, uh, yeah, new pieces you prepare. And so we thought for this year, it would be nice to uh, enter the first competition and we'll see where it takes us, if it's only contacts or if we will um, get a prize, that would be of course lovely. But uh, yeah, yeah uh, I think, yeah, it's rather that. And it's um, a different kind of working, I mm -hmm. would say, because uh, pre uh, prepare for concerts, it's, um, always uh, done by heart because we love to do concerts and our programs are completely made ourselves. So the goal here is uh, to be um, free during concert and during playing and uh, can uh, to be creative. So the goal in now with the competition is very different, maybe also for, for the two of us. Mm. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I like it too. Because uh, really you have to pre prepare in a different way, I guess. Yeah. And now for the uh, for this the concerts that you're doing, uh, do you stick to classical music or uh, do you go to different genres as well? Well, uh, it's a very good question because we just had our Advent concerts. Like Christmas is, of course, the uh, uh, best magical time for harp and singing, right? It's, uh, yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> and yeah. um, there we also went into genres like a pop. So we did oh, okay. do, uh, Mary, did you know, or River, and uh, got great feedback from the audience. I mean, of course, we are trained as classical musicians, and that's the field we are also, or at least I am most comfortable with because you kind of know how it works. But of course, we are socialized with pop music and with jazz music yeah. and we listen to it in our free time. So it comes naturally to try it out. And it was really great to experience mm -hmm. that it works so well with harp yeah. and singing, actually. Yeah. And uh, I, I could imagine that we do that more often. Yeah, I really liked it. Yeah. Yeah, I've spoken to different um, musicians uh, who, who have different opinions about that. But 
I, I find kind of mostly get the idea that this is also something to attract audiences and and sort of, you know, have this little bit of um, more commercial or pop music mm -hmm. with it, and then the the classical music, and then um, the, some have also said that they going through to these different genres. You also adapt and 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 learn something and get something from each part that you're doing so do you find that as well yeah totally um i'm not a big fan of this um putting things in one place and say this is the writing uh, and this is not real music things like that uh -huh. it's, it's not true because uh in the end it's all music and music is a special language and if i listen to music um and don't know don't matter which genre it is uh i have the possibility to to understand something new and to hear something new so i would say as a real musician you should be able to listen to everything uh not that uh, you have to be a big fan of jazz or have to say oh this uh, pop uh, genre uh, this is really um what i want to hear all the day long yeah but um yeah there should be uh, the possibility to understand uh, something in every song we can hear and to feel something or uh, exploring something maybe we haven't heard yet so yeah that's why i'm i'm very interested in mix all the genres and um yeah try everything new afterwards i can decide okay that's not my stuff or i'm really not feeling well with this but um, at least i tried so yeah. yeah and i think it also has to do with improving colors yeah it's like um i mean it's a lot of practicing it's a lot of work to uh, get to know different pieces but I do believe that every musician is kind of also searching for more and more colors. And if I have to sing pop or a chanson, I have to use a different style. And then if I want to reach over a big orchestra and opera, I need to have a different style. But in the end, it makes the palette of possibilities of using my voice just so much richer. And that's great. And I also feel that as classical music is not the main music um, genre that is probably listened to today, it's kind of also an educational um, yeah, calling to, to find the links. Because so often music has a topos, right? Like if it's nature, if it's love, and it, in, in its uh, roots, it has the same thing to say. Mm. If it's Italian exactly. opera or if it's a, a pop song that we just recently hear in the radio. And that is actually also much fun when we explore this in art and poetry in songs and then mix it up together and see how 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 the variety is 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 shown then in concerts. That's absolutely right. And and uh, you know I I can't remember who the con I spoke to a conductor a long time ago and he said the same thing. You know like that some of these pop music um, the the music itself is such great music but uh, we don't realize it or people don't realize it but it's it's actually uh great uh, compositions mm. yeah mm. but now i want to i spoke to a um a harpist uh the other day uh in in chicago mm -hmm. and she said that and this is this is now behind the scenes with a harp that I always find so intriguing is the logistics, you know, because it's not a violin that you just pick up and <laughs> and carry with you. So how is it with you when you when you decide on going to a concert, you have to think about how you get the harp there? Yeah. Um... Um, it's a fun story because uh, when I uh, got my driving lessons, uh, I was really stressed and uh, I came home and told, uh, said to my parents, I will never drive again. Never. So <laughs> now it's <laughs> the most useful tool I ever learned <laughs> because it's um, very easy um, yeah, with a car. Um, yeah, the, the help has to be prepared uh, for the transport. But uh, and then you have to, uh, you, yeah, of course, you have all this logistic stuff around that you have to think about. 
um, how the concert area looks like. Uh, is there an elevator or something like that? Or it's, uh, everything is um, on uh, down the floor? Uh, yeah, things like that. But, uh, well, you get used to it because um, it's part of being a harpist. And um, yeah. I always say it's um, like having free fitness lessons every day. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember she was saying also, I mean, Chicago is a big city, but, but looking for parking spots and, and is yeah. there stairs and is there ramps and things like that. So it's always interesting to think that we don't think about that, but the harp goes yeah. with you, you know, so, so that's part of it. And then I also want to know about your your um because you you wear some beautiful garments that I saw on, on Instagram that both of you, you know, you've got such a lovely style and and dress games and so on. Yeah. So how much thought just uh, goes into that? Do you do you prepare together? Do you coordinate your outfits? How do you do that? Oh, that's uh, it's a tricky question because I <laughs> believe that every musician has kind of a big collection on things to wear on stage. I mean, yeah. mainly black, but that's also like when you're just two, then we always wanted to have some color or something yeah. that's yeah. not just black wardrobe. Um, but uh, then every now and then we are just collecting all our dresses and then we put them on and see what works together. Mm -hmm. And now we have kind of three to four outfits that work together and that we are sticking to. Yeah. Because it's like, then we we haven't went shopping together or anything like that. So it's more <laughs> like, then, maybe we should actually, because then yeah. I have a darker blue tone or she has a darker uh, green tone and it does not really work together. But uh, it's actually also fun to search for different things to wear for each program. Yeah. Because of course, uh, something that had to do with flowers and with nature mm -hmm. and the power of nature, which is more a summer program of us. It's also fun to wear something according to that. And then yeah, we have yeah. like uh, one program that is more talking about uh, the blue hour and the night. And uh, it's then also a little bit settled with the, with the garments that we're checking. Yeah. And you, what I find also so beautiful is, is you have both your distinct styles you you have you know you are really you can absolutely see your both your personalities in what you do and so on so that's also beautiful I think that that goes with that um with making this dew so special you know that it's not just the very contrasting instruments but that it's all the personality that that you have as well so yeah. very congratulations you've got to <laughs> I really it caught my eye and it was so it's I, I find it so beautiful and how you do it and, and the style you are um keeping to and, and so on. So that's that's wonderful. Thank but you. now tell me, um we are in 2023 now and I would love to know what your wish is for, for this year. Ooh. Oh yeah, well um we hope for um, nice concerts, mm -hmm. as lots as possible. Um, and especially, I think um, we, we um, or the past two years, we were invited to some summer festivals, uh, which were outside. So this was completely new. But um, I would say we, we're really into this now. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're looking forward to the summer season. And um, we decided um, to uh, use this year to promote uh, some programs uh, fr uh, from our selection, especially Prisma, which was a, um, a cooperation with um, some visual designer, Lena Vogel, here from Weimar. And um, this is a bigger program where, where we, um, uh, how to say, um, where we have these visual designs, which are um, on a big screen, oh, okay. in front of the screen, and we are, you could say, part of the visual design. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we get uh, a lot of chances to play this program this year, or it's planned to do this. Um, yeah, yeah, and I think it it is, uh, and we we hope to even more break free from the 
classical setting because when I see our first program, then it was very in the classical chamber music uh, way. So we have the harp, we have uh, me standing beside there and singing. And uh, more and more, we started to have some acting in between, mm -hmm. some interactions in between us, some moving through the room, some uh, dancing even. And uh, that's also quite interesting, I think, to go mm -hmm. down that path and see how much or where can we break free of the um, yeah normal picture of a harp yeah. and a singer, but explore more areas to reach out to more audience. Yeah. yeah. And very interesting that you're talking about this visual um, effect, because um, I just refer back to interviews because it, it, it makes these links for me as a pianist that I've spoken to who, who, also have these wonderful visuals with his music and and he was talking about that and bringing that into concert you know to have this element with the music and i think we also um we love that as audience members isn't it to have also this visual and i think this is also why um maybe you as as musicians you have thought into what you wear or the, you know the harp has their its decorative things but i think all these things the visual things that come with it is also so important yes absolutely mm -hmm. and to actually also have the possibility like we called it our artist in residence so mm -hmm. lena is our artist in residence so that we can open up as a duo to another person that comes in with another idea and yeah. something and to just uh yeah get get all the ideas together and not only the the two of us even though there are also <laughs> many programs not yet uh, planned and done but uh, to have another mind working with us and of course also another direction of art yeah yeah, so, yeah. because that is uh, that's what Lena's doing yeah this this combination i find so interesting but now um Tell me, what would your advice now be for a young musician or a young artist um, uh, to say uh, they, they're still studying or they're still just in that phase of, of deciding that they want to be professional? What, what would your advice be? Um, I would say um, studying music can be very hard sometimes. And the best you can do is remember yourself every day why are you doing this and which persons um lift you up really really lift you up and um a third point maybe is um to remember um which persons you want to reach with your art so this can be very different every day but um yeah it's important uh, to play for yourself and to play for the people you want uh, you want to be connected to during concert and yeah sometimes um, in university uh, you get lost a little bit in all the stuff you have to do or you should do or maybe um, there are some persons who give you an image uh, of which person you should be or have to be to be a musician but uh, at least that's not true maybe it fits yeah. but it don't has to fit or it's it's not uh, there is another possibility to be a musician and yeah you should be very strong with yourself and stay with yourself this is important. yeah i believe that too and i think uh, as, as natasha already um kind of linked to there is a lot of competition and it is really really hard but as long as you take care of yourself and surround yourself with the people that you're happy with and that give you a good feeling you will get through these hard times because I know that the duo Cantapa has uh, done me so much good when I kind of felt lost because then it is coming home, making music together with someone you know very well and that you know will treat you well and wants only your best. Mm -hmm. And that is then kind of Iceland of, uh, of, of, yeah, all the positivity. So I'm, I'm very glad that we have the duo Cantapa also for the sake of that this is the area where I can use my creativity. There is not anyone at a register or a, a teacher or anyone that that wants something else from me, even though I want to grow into something new and something bigger. And we do that also together. But this togetherness is, I think, very important. 
for you. Um, and it's so interesting that you say also this uh, and, and finding yourself, because I think during the lockdowns, I uh, photographed 500 artists in their windows here in Vienna. And the interesting thing for me is, uh, and, and I don't think these people uh, realize it, but I can actually remember every person and there many were did the same thing, you know, many, many pianists or, or conductors, but they each even though it was just through the window, I didn't even hear them play or, or anything. Their personalities were so, so completely different. And um, and I, I sometimes think that, yeah, even though there are so many pianists and so many singers and so many harpists, and even by me speaking to everybody and, and doing these interviews, I still can remember everybody and and that you all have different personalities. So I think that's so important to realize also for young artists to, to realize that you have your place, even though Absolutely. you are doing the same as everybody else, but you have your place in your own identity and personality. So I'm... Um, yeah, that's very, very good advice, I think, for, for them. And of course, yeah, I think these, uh, you know, getting together, these collaborations also bring, uh, like you say, in the beginning, you said you learn something from each other. How wonderful, you know, that we that we get that uh, from each other. So it's it's great. Yeah. But it was so lovely to talk to you too. Um, I'll still be following you on Instagram, see what you're doing. And, and I know, um, Lucia, you, you've recently also done work in the um, prisons. You said you did concerts yes. there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. If you can quickly just tell me something about that, that was very interesting. Yeah, it was a wonderful project. Uh, because of Corona, we, it was a project that actually lasted for two years because we could oh, okay. not go in prisons again because they totally locked down everything. And it was uh, with very inspiring uh, colleagues, so with the uh, dual contrast. I know that you already talked to Daniel Roth as well, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and another singer. And we went there and... Um, they, the, the prisoners, gave us texts that they have written themselves, uh, where they, yeah, write down what they were thinking about, what they, what processes went uh, through them. And we were then asking them, uh, what kind of musical style do you hear? What do you like to listen to? And then one said, I like medieval songs. So I never sang medieval music, but um, then I was uh, like, okay, well. Then we will find the style. So uh, we went home and then I listened to a lot of medieval songs and then we kind of created songs for them. And it was then quite um, a very intimate exchange because we came back, we all respected each other very much. And I think there is um, there must be a chance that all these people find their way in society again. And the best way is to then reflect over what did I do and what where do I want to go next time and what are actually my anchors in life. And with us bringing it into music, it was such a strong gift for them so they could open up even more. And then there was no... Yeah, no, no hard feelings, no, no, no judgment, but there was just human meeting another human and then respecting each other and learn from each other there as well. So that was a great project. And I really support everyone that does go into prisons and to be brave enough to, yeah, widen the horizon a bit with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's also this idea of art, um, you know, sort of breaking the, the boundaries almost, you know, and, and saying, okay, so when it comes to art, there's not this um, you can't do it or you can't do it. And, and it brings people together in a way and it communicates in a way. And, um, yeah, so and, and it's so important. I, I so wish we could have that in schools also, you know, that we have art much more prominent and giving some people, you know, children that, that um, don't uh, necessarily want to go the science routes, but they to give them the opportunity to to express themselves through art, because this is a, a way of expressing as well. 
And and yes. Natasha, like you said as well, it's is it for, for you and what the message you bring across? Yeah. And this is exactly what what you've done now, um, Lucia, in the in the prisons. Girls, I wish <laughs> I could meet you in person. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, Please, Please come to Frankfurt yeah. or my <laughs> Yeah, come to Vienna, maybe. Yeah. Okay, okay, come and do a concert here. Will you let me know when you come to Vienna? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you yeah. should come and do a concert here. Yeah, that, that would be great. Yeah, part of the agenda now. <laughs> <laughs> Good, but um, have a wonderful day and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. And um, and uh, yeah, all the best for 2023, and keep keep going with this wonderful work you're doing. <laughs> thank, thank you so much for your time. <laughs>